At the onset of the 20th century, the collapse of empires gave rise to numerous nations brimming with aspirations for freedom and independence amidst the chaotic backdrop of the post-war world. Among these emerging states, Armenia and Azerbaijan were thrust into a complex and turbulent period, each striving to solidify their nascent nations during the tumultuous years between 1918 and 21. The profound historical transformations of this era set the stage for a conflict that would define the South Caucasus for the century to follow. It was in the aftermath of the Russian Revolution and the vacuum of power that would follow that they were able to take their chances. These newly minted republics took to sculpting their national identities and territorial borders out of the vast expanses of the fallen imperial behemoth. Their claims to the lands, well, they both considered them historically and ethnically theirs. All in all, it was a simmering pot of conflict rooted in centuries of legacies and forced demographic shifts just waiting to explode. The two nations had territorial disputes that sparked a series of conflicts coined the Armenian-Azerbaijani Wars that showed just how deep their contention was. A key source of this discord was the Nagorno-Karabakh region, a complex mix of ethnic groups and historical claims. The war caused great suffering and violence among the communities, and only stopped with the help of a stronger power. The Russian Empire had intervened many times in the past and used the local Christians as a pawn in its expanding frontier. The Tsar wanted to reach the Persian Gulf shores, and they've used the Armenian factor to their advantage since the 18th century. They moved many Armenians to Azerbaijani lands under treaties like Turkmenchai and Edirne. The discord had roots in both modern and ancient times, as the empire shaped the fate of these peoples. Now the history of these two republics changed drastically and dramatically with the rise of the Soviet Union in 1922. The USSR had actually morphed them into constituent states, first as part of the Transcaucasian SFSR, and then as separate republics from 1936 onward. However, as often seen, the Soviet influence brought in a false peace to the region, but the old historical and ethnic conflicts still boiled under the surface. Stalin tried to create a fake unity among the different ethnicities and nationalities, regardless of beliefs or culture, all for the advancement of his great state. In a notable instance, the leaders of the two republics jointly petitioned Stalin to facilitate the voluntary resettlement of Azerbaijani populations. This event, occurring in December 1947, was part of Stalin's plan to create a homogeneous Armenian state and to weaken the Azerbaijani national identity. The Soviet authorities used the term voluntary resettlement to hide the fact that the deportation was forced and brutal. The deportation of Azerbaijani from Armenia had lasting consequences for the ethnic composition and the territorial disputes of the region. The Soviet censuses revealed a steadily declining presence of ethnic minorities in both republics outside of Nagorno-Karabakh by 1989, a testament to the shifting political and social undercurrents of the time. The Karabakh region, however, remained a contested area with a majority of ethnic Armenians within the Azerbaijani territory. This change, mostly peaceful during the Soviet era, made the future we see today more unstable. With the quiet period interrupted by hidden ethnic and nationalist feelings that waited for a chance to come out again, the calm during the Soviet period could be seen as a forced hiding of the deep historical hatreds that had hurt the relationship between these peoples. But it was also a time that allowed, through central authority and communist ideology, a rare opportunity for both states to grow and develop without the fear of territorial fights and violent conflict. As the Soviet structure inevitably collapsed, the repressed nationalist passions across the region began to revive like never before. In the late 1980s, the waves of cultural reawakening broke the ghostly peace that once ruled these scarred lands. The Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Oblast, a predominantly Armenian enclave within the Azerbaijani borders, became the focal point of a historical transformation that spiraled into an endless cycle of conflict, shaping the fate of both Armenia and Azerbaijan for decades to come. It was in 1988 that the long-lasting silence was broken by the determined voices of the Armenians of Karabakh, who voted massively to break away from Azerbaijan and join their ethnic brethren in Armenia. A proposition laden with danger, it was met not with dialogue, but with violence. Massacres against Armenians unfolded throughout Azerbaijan, in cities such as Sumgait, Baku, and Kirobabad, depicting a grim picture of the hatred and primal fear 
that ran deep between the communities. The collapse of the USSR provided a trigger for a full-scale war that broke out in the early 1990s. It was a fierce conflict that drew old battle lines and carved new scars upon the land and people. Armenian forces, supported by the Republic of Armenia and the self-declared Republic of Artsakh, succeeded in not only keeping control over Nagorno-Karabakh, but also in seizing surrounding Azerbaijani territories. The victories and defeats left deep wounds. The expulsions of ethnic Armenians from Azerbaijan and vice versa solidified the divisions, setting the stage for a prolonged, unresolved dispute that would intermittently erupt into open warfare for years to come. The fragile status quo held weakly until 2020, when the latent friction ignited into a devastating 44-day war. The region once again became a stage of modern warfare, claiming the lives of thousands and displacing many more. This most recent clash highlighted the persisting instability of the region, the lasting grievances of the past, and the ever-present possibility for resumption of hostilities. This cycle of conflict and ceasefire, where aspirations for self-determination clash with principles of territorial integrity, persists. It reveals the complexities facing not only the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan, but also the larger international community seeking to foster lasting peace in this troubled region. The dawn of the 21st century witnessed a mosaic of conflicts in the South Caucasus, woven with a thread of historical grudges and contemporary geopolitical ambitions. In the post-Soviet era, the already intricate interplay between Armenia and Azerbaijan was further complicated by the involvement of external regional powers, each maneuvering to influence the outcome of the Nagorno-Karabakh dispute according to their strategic interests. This brutal 44-day war showcased the evolved might of modern militaries and highlighted the fragility of peace in an area overshadowed by the ghosts of former empires. Thousands of soldiers and civilians paid the ultimate price in a bitter struggle that involved modern aspects like drones and electronic warfare, but also concepts like the trenches and dugouts of old. The heavy phase of combat ended following the ceasefire brokered once again by Russia in November 2020. Despite the apparent cessation of hostilities, occasional skirmishes kept the region in a state of unease, with the potential for escalation a constant threat. It was clear that the deeply rooted issues would require more than a temporary truce to resolve. In a landscape molded by conflict, Sochi emerged as a venue for reconciliation when the leaders of Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Russia convened to deliberate upon paths to ameliorate relations. Discourse ranged from border security to economic cooperation, underscoring the critical role of mediation and the shared desire, at least publicly, for a normalized state of affairs. Constant border confrontations continued to inflame hostilities as Azerbaijan's military incursions into Armenian territory in 2021 laid bare the precariousness of the ceasefire and the perceived significance of each acre of the contested land. From this point in time, looking toward what the future holds, the landscape of relations is fraught with strategic ambiguity. Now, this web of alliances and interests is made even more complicated by the roles of neighboring Turkey, Iran, and to a lesser extent, the U.S. and the E.U., along with the more distant but technologically influential Israel. Turkey, bound by cultural and linguistic ties with Azerbaijan, took a decisive stance, sealing its borders with Armenia in a show of solidarity in 1993. Ankara's gambit in the political chessboard of the region veers towards supporting Baku's aspirations, a posture that predicates significant influence on the unfolding regional dynamics. The Armenian-Turkish impasse, though historically rooted, remains susceptible to shifts within the broader geopolitical landscape. Iran, a nation with a substantial Azerbaijani population, outwardly maintains a neutral stance, offering its services as an intercessor while closely monitoring the pulse of the conflict. However, it must be said, its neutrality should be gauged against the backdrop of its large-scale military drills along the border with Azerbaijan, suggestive of Tehran's vested interest in preserving regional balance and curbing any spillover effect that might unsettle internal demographics or external alliances. One such alliance is with the Russian government, where they utilize Armenia as one of the connections between the two for deliveries of goods. Like Iran's Shahed drone, seen in Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Israel, though somewhat geographically remote from our story today, casts a long and formidable shadow through its strategic partnership with Azerbaijan. Deeply seated defense collaborations, 
transcending mere arms transactions, are indicative of a confluence of interests that bear significant weight, particularly illustrated by Azerbaijan's use of advanced Israeli unmanned drone technologies during the 2020 confrontation. So you can see why Iran would be a bit worried about a total war scenario with Israel in the mix. This twisted game of thrones a powder keg, just waiting for the match. The influence of these outside actors converges into an already potent force that shapes, directs, and sometimes intensifies the Armenian-Azerbaijani tangle. As the regional powers continue to maneuver, this delicate balance held the key to either the ignition of hostilities or the cultivation of an enduring peace. The conflict, with its persistent intensity and sporadic flare-ups, has not only scarred the lands and peoples, but also entrenched itself as a formidable impediment to regional prosperity and global trade. One such example is Turkey and Azerbaijan's planned Zangazur Corridor, which aims to connect Europe with Asia through land routes traversing the Turkic states in Central Asia. While there are more routes planned by Turkey, this one in particular hinges on Armenia's cooperation on allowing connection from the mainland of Azerbaijan to the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic, a small but critical part of the nation cut off by the southern portion of Armenia. More on this region later, as it will undoubtedly play a critical role in future tensions. But for now, let's take a step beyond the battlefields. The repercussions reverberate through every stratum of society, entangling economies and sowing a tapestry of humanitarian concerns. Armenia's economic lifelines, hindered by blockades from Turkey and Azerbaijan, face challenges that transcend mere geographical constraints. Reliant on the vital support of its diaspora and international patrons, Armenia's government has vowed to navigate the constraints imposed by its geopolitical predicament. The economic toll is mirrored in a development trajectory that has been continuously disrupted by the turbulence of the conflict. Conversely, Azerbaijan's hydrocarbon affluence has fueled not just its economy, but also its military might to levels far exceeding Armenia's potential. The oil-rich lands had been harnessed to equip and modernize its armed forces, a strategy that crystallized into tangible outcomes during the recent clashes at the time. Yet, these advancements came at a price, overshadowed by the social and fiscal burden of addressing humanitarian crises, underscored by bleak refugee encampments that dot the landscapes. With every skirmish and artillery barrage, the conflict fractures communities and families, leaving civilians to bear the heaviest burden. Displacement and loss define the lives of those uprooted by the confrontation. With humanitarian organizations sounding the alarm on the distress faced by refugees and the widespread war crimes committed by both belligerents, the bitter fruit of this conflict is another generation growing up in the shadows of upheaval their futures uncertain, and their heritage contested by perceived enemies. But in the bleakness of the war and chaos, the potential for healing and growth exists. The relentless cycles of conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan reaches far beyond their borders, echoing in the hearts and actions of their extensive diasporas. From the sprawling lands of Russia to the vibrant communities of the United States, Armenians and Azerbaijanis abroad occupy a unique vantage point, affording them both perspective and leverage to advocate for their ancestral homelands. The Armenian diaspora, with its roughly seven million constituents scattered across the globe, remains steadfastly invested in the national questions that define Armenia's sovereignty and identity. These global citizens, often refugees and descendants of genocide survivors, carry the collective memory of their historical trials galvanizing their commitment to support Armenia through philanthropy, political activism, and cultural preservation. The recent push toward normalizing relations with Azerbaijan and Turkey has not been without contention, which grapples with reconciling the needs of the present with the scars of the past. In a similar vein, the Azerbaijani diaspora, though less highlighted in the narrative of the conflict, exercises its influence through concerted diplomatic efforts and strategic advocacy. Bolstered by the international awareness raised by Armenia, the Azerbaijani have also grown more vociferous, seeking to articulate the injustices faced by their country in the past and their vision for its future. All of this came to a head in the year 2023, which marked a significant turning point in the long-standing conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan over the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh. On September 19th, Azerbaijan launched a large-scale military offensive against the self-proclaimed Republic of Artsakh, 
a move seen as a violation of the 2020 ceasefire agreement. The offensive took place amid an escalating crisis caused by Azerbaijani environmentalists blockading the routes into Artsakh, which resulted in significant scarcities of essential supplies in the affected region. Naturally, this was used as a pretext, and the offensive was swift but decisive. Azerbaijan used its superior military might and modern weaponry to overwhelm the Armenian forces. Claiming to have captured 90 combat positions and regained control over most of the territories that Armenia had occupied since the early 90s. The war lasted only one day, as a ceasefire agreement was reached the next morning. With the mediation of, yet again, the Russian peacekeeping command in the area, a new status quo was to be settled in the region. This new ceasefire agreement stipulated that the Republic of Artsakh would be dissolved on January 1, 2024, and that the Artsakh Defense Army must be disbanded. Azerbaijan also demanded that Armenia withdraw all its troops from the remaining parts of Nagorno-Karabakh and allow the return of Azerbaijani refugees and displaced persons. Armenia agreed to these terms but expressed its deep regret and sorrow for the loss of what it called its historic and cultural heritage in the region. The new war caused great suffering and violence among the communities, claiming the lives of thousands of soldiers and civilians on both sides, and displaced many, many more. Human rights organizations and experts in genocide prevention issued multiple alerts, stating that the region's Armenian population was at risk or actively being subjected to ethnic cleansing, as well as increased war crimes that could go unnoticed. Luis Ocampo, the inaugural prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, warned that another Armenian genocide could take place, and attributed the inaction of the international community as a sign to Azerbaijan that it would face no serious consequences. The war also had significant geopolitical implications in the region. Russia faced criticism for not preventing the war or supporting Armenia more strongly in the first place. Turkey supported Azerbaijan militarily, diplomatically, and also celebrated its victory as a historic achievement for the Turkic world. Iran expressed its concern over the instability and violence in its northern border and offered to mediate between the parties to keep the status quo. While France condemned Azerbaijan's aggression in violation of the 2020 ceasefire and ramped up its supplying of arms to Armenia to defend its sovereignty and territorial integrity in the face of any new potential fighting, the USA, the EU, and Israel also played important roles in the 2023 conflict, each with their own interests and perspectives. America, as a co-chair of the OSCE Minsk Group, tried to facilitate a peaceful resolution of the conflict, urging both sides to respect the ceasefire. The EU, as a major partner and donor of both Armenia and Azerbaijan, expressed its concern over the escalation of violence and called for an immediate end to hostilities and a return to negotiations. Europe also provided humanitarian and development assistance to the affected populations and supported the efforts of the Minsk Group and the UN. However, they also faced challenges in maintaining a unified and coherent position on the conflict. The South Caucasus is a region that is rich in history, culture, and diversity, but also plagued by conflicts, tensions, and divisions. The Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, which has defined the relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan for decades, is a prime example of how the aspirations and grievances of the people often collide with the interests and ambitions of the powers. The 2020 and 2023 wars, which resulted in the dissolution of the Republic of Artsakh and the restoration of Azeri control over most of the disputed territories, have not resolved the underlying issues, but have only increased the risk of further violence and instability. Russia, Turkey, Iran, France, the U.S., the EU, and Israel all have their own agendas and interests in the region. Some of these interests are conflicting and overlapping creating an increasingly complex web of alliances and rivalries. For instance, Israel and Iran are engaged in a lengthily cold war that involves arming and supporting Azerbaijan and Armenia respectively, as well as Israel using the region as a base for espionage and sabotage against Iran. Turkey, on the other hand, has a vision of creating a Turkic economic bloc that would connect it with Azerbaijan and other Central Asian countries through the Zangazur Corridor a transport route that would pass through Armenia's Shunik province. This corridor, however, is strongly opposed by Armenia, which sees it as a threat to its sovereignty and security. Now, based on everything we've covered today, one can easily argue that the South Caucasus is a region that is ripe for further conflict, 
especially in the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic region of Azerbaijan. The strategic corridor that connects the mainland with Turkey and Israel and separates Armenia from Iran. It's that small enclave of the country cut off by southern Armenia we mentioned earlier. The area is a flashpoint for the exact same ethnic and religious tensions as in the Nagorno-Karabakh region home to an Azerbaijani and Armenian population that faces discrimination and oppression from whichever regime they happen to live under at the time. Moreover, the area is also a potential threat for Iran, which has a large Azeri population in the region that is dissatisfied with the regime and could be influenced by Azerbaijan's moves. The Caucasus in general is constantly at the crossroads of history due to its geography and is an area we plan to cover far more in depth in later installments. The future of the region is still uncertain and unpredictable. It can either be a source of another major war involving multiple world powers all pitted against one another, or a source for lasting peace between two historical enemies.